We are less than a day away from the draft. There is a ton of information coming out, a lot to talk about in this video. I don't wanna waste any time. Let's just get right into it. There is some big stuff. And the biggest one, I'm just gonna let you know right now, is that the Chargers are deciding between Joe Alt and Marvin Harrison Jr. at the fifth overall pick. And apparently, they are still open to trading down, so hopefully that does happen if Marvin Harrison Jr. is not available and the Cardinals take him. But also at the bottom here, you can see that Joe Hortiz is the one that might be pushing Jim Harbaugh to lean Joe Alt. That is something that I was not expecting, but we all know Joe Hortiz and Jim Harbaugh both value offensive line very highly. Let's see what happens, but also there's more to talk about here specifically with the trades. So, Jaden Daniels at two to the Commanders. That's looking pretty solid right now, and that leaves Drake May, that's very important, and J.J. McCarthy as the two quarterbacks left. Drake May is the quarterback that the Vikings want because of their connection with Josh McCown, who used to coach him in high school. Josh McCown, he's the quarterback's coach with the Vikings, and they are going to try and trade up with the Patriots for number three overall and take Drake May but that is not likely to happen because they're going to be asking for a huge haul. A Bryce Young type haul is what's being reported. And also there have been reports that the Patriots owners have more say in the decision-making on the football side of things than what we have all been led to believe. And Robert Kraft, the Patriots owner, he publicly stated that he wants a top-rate quarterback. So people are starting to feel pretty confident in the Patriots taking Drake May. Some people are saying that they could take J.J. McCarthy at three, but it's going to be a quarterback nonetheless. And that brings us to the Cardinals pick at four. This is where it gets really juicy, really interesting, a little bit complicated. So pay attention very closely. The Cardinals, they are one of the teams that has been rumored to trade down for like months now. We all know that, but the closer that we get, the more it's starting to look like they're, they're probably just going to stay at four and take Marvin Harrison Jr., a Cardinals insider who has a really great track record, by the way. He said that he thinks the Cardinals will be asking for a ton in a trade down scenario, just like the Chargers will be. But that shows how highly that the Cardinals view Marvin Harrison Jr. So they would be hard pressed to pass on a great wide receiver like him and would demand more draft capital than teams would be willing to give up. Marvin Harrison Jr. has been very particular in his draft process. He's been criticized for that. He's like skipped workouts, skipped the combine. He's not taking visits, but it's worth noting that he only took two visits and it was with the Bears who have the number one overall pick. He's not going to go number one overall, but also with the Cardinals, who have the fourth overall pick. So I think that maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. believes that there is no chance the Cardinals pass on him. But, you know, we will see what happens. We should also consider that if the Patriots take Drake May, which I think is the most likely outcome, then the Vikings might not even be wanting to trade up for J.J. McCarthy. There's this report now that's coming out that they would be fine with taking Bo Nix at 11 or even 23 if he's there. But Bo Nix, I mean, he is more similar to Drake May than J.J. McCarthy is, but that would just be insane if that happens. And it would certainly bring down the trade market for the Cardinals pick and for the Chargers pick if it comes to that if the Vikings are not interested in J.J. McCarthy, but there's still, there's going to be other teams that are interested in J.J., like the Giants. They have been rumored to J.J. McCarthy in a trade-up scenario, and that is very tempting if you are the Cardinals or the Chargers, because then you would just be moving down to six, and you would be guaranteed to get, like, your guy, maybe Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt, if that's your guy, and definitely Malik Neighbors is probably going to be there. But there are a ton of people saying now that the Giants are not a JJ McCarthy team. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that brings the trade value down even more if the Giants are not interested in JJ McCarthy. I'm not saying that either team is out, like the, Vians, uh, the Giants or the Vikings are for sure out, but we're close enough to the draft now where if all of these NFL insiders are saying the same thing just like 24 hours before the draft. I think it is very significant to take into account. And also, teams that are interested in moving up outside of the Vikings and the Giants are the Broncos and the Raiders, our two division rivals trying to trade up for a quarterback. So why would they trade with us when they could trade with the Cardinals? Well, the Cardinals could be asking for too much. I mean, they are in that prime position for Marvin Harrison Jr., not us. And out of those two teams, the Broncos and the Raiders, 
I can really only envision like the Broncos trading up. And, and I, I know that's crazy because they just signed Zach Wilson, who's going to be their franchise quarterback, right? I mean, John Elway, he's a really good quarterback evaluator and he's just signed Zach Wilson. But no, seriously, they reportedly are willing to put Patrick Sertan on the table in trade talks. And that is now my official dream scenario for the Chargers. You trade down with the Broncos for like, say it would be their 12th pick. You would take JC Latham or Talise Fuanga there. And then you also get Patrick Sertan, a bona fide top three cornerback in the NFL with two years left on his rookie deal. He's going into that fourth year. He had that fifth year picked up and he's only 24 years old. Like he just turned 24. There are a ton of draft prospects in this draft that are going to be entering the NFL older than Patrick Sertan, who has already proven himself as one of the best cornerbacks in the league. So we would be getting a premier player at a position of need and an extremely valuable position on a rookie contract with the 12th pick. And then honestly, for me, after that, everything else is icing on the cake. We'd probably get like their first round pick next year. And then maybe, I don't know, one of their third round picks this year. But the Cardinals would also be tempted by that same package and it would be outside of the division. It's really all up to the Cardinals here, I think. But Sean Payton, he's probably going to push to go hard and get his guy, which might be J.J. McCarthy. And, you know, Peyton Manning said that the Broncos are very interested in J.J. McCarthy. He would not be one to spew nonsense. And also, he is somebody that is very connected into that Broncos building. So he knows what's going on. And he says that they like J.J. Whether the Broncos trade with the Cardinals or the Chargers, I, I just, I really think that's probably up to the Cardinals and whether they take that package. Because, you know, I think the Cardinals really like Marvin Harrison Jr. Would they move down all the way to 12 and then you're missing out on Romo Dunze, Malik Neighbors, and Marvin Harrison Jr.? I mean, who are you going to take? Brian Thomas Jr. at that spot? I, I just, I don't know if they want to trade down that far. But back to the biggest news, back to the Chargers and that offensive lineman. The closer that we get, the more reports we are seeing of the Chargers taking an offensive lineman and specifically Joe Alt. But I've even seen the Chargers connected to JC Latham at fifth overall, which that is my new nightmare scenario. I didn't even think that that was possible, but now that is my nightmare. Overall, I think that if the Cardinals take Marvin Harrison Jr., the best outcome for the Chargers is just it's to trade down, man, because it's really starting to feel like they take Joe Walt if they stay at five and Marvin Harrison Jr. is not there. I just, I don't know. I really am hoping that this is all a smokescreen and they still would take Malik Neighbors, but it just doesn't feel that way. And also there was this stat put out by ESPN yesterday that showed the hit rate of first round players. Look at wide receiver, man. They're all the way at the bottom while offensive tackle is all the way at the top. They're the second rated one. So theoretically, if we don't take into account the Chargers depth chart right now, which is in desperate need of a wide receiver, they might view Joe Alt as like the safer pick and then hit on a wide receiver in day two because there are like legitimately there there is a, a case here because there are plenty of wide receivers to be had on day two and historically some of the best wide receivers have been picked in the second and the third round and even just last year puka nakua he had the best rookie wide receiver right wide receiver season in nfl freaking history he was picked in the fifth round and there's always tons of depth at the wide receiver position you just, you really never know. And also with that argument that you're not gonna be picking this high again at the fifth overall pick, you need to take Malik Neighbors. You need to take a difference making wide receiver like that. I think you can use that same argument with offensive tackle and Joe Alt. You're not gonna be picking this high again, hopefully. So you need to take your definite all pro offensive lineman and then figure out where to put him on the offensive line once you get into training camp. I mean, people take wide receiver highly People also take tackles very highly, and those positions are both extremely valuable in the NFL. I'm just, I'm really hoping for the Cardinals to trade down so that we can take Marvin Harrison Jr. or just for the Chargers to trade down and then select their offensive lineman after that. But it just seems like they're pretty locked in on either JC Latham, Joe Walt, Talise Fuanga, even, you know, Troy Fautanu. I would almost bet that one of those four guys is going to be a Charger by the end of the day tomorrow. And some of you are going to love to hear that. Some of you guys are just going to dislike this video because I said that, but you know, don't shoot the messenger, man. I'm just telling you the information. And if we read the tea leaves here, both Joe Hortiz 
and Jim Harbaugh value offensive line very highly. Even that report that said Joe Hortiz is the one that's pushing for Joe Alt. There's just been a ton of talk about offensive line early and it's heating up a lot as we get closer. Our saving grace from Joe Alt or even, oh my God, JC Latham at five, it, it might just be a trade down scenario. So Joe Hortiz, Get the Broncos on the phone right now, man. Sean Payton, come on. Get your quarterback. Jim Harbaugh, he's going to talk you into J.J. McCarthy as the next best thing. I mean, let's get Jim Harbaugh on the phone with John Elway right now, and he'll help out John Elway in his evaluation of quarterbacks because he never gets it right. Give us Pat Sertan, a couple of first-round picks. Let's make this happen, please. I know we all want Malik Neighbors and not Joe Walt, and definitely not J.C. Latham at five, but I talk more about Joe Walt in this video because I was starting to feel like this yesterday and uh, I, you know, I just watch the video. I, I explain everything. <laughs>